There are 10 criteria that Sotheby's specialists consider when assigning prices to art, jewelry, wine, watches, and more. This is how we determine the value of art. Rarity is the ultimate prize. It's finding the car that has 500 miles on it, that's been perfectly taken care of. Rare is one of the most used and abused words in our industry. Rarity is a little bit of a, just because it's rare doesn't mean it's great. And if it's great, it doesn't have to be rare. It might be rare because what are the chances of it having survived all through these centuries, not lost in obscurity or damaged or destroyed? One can gloat and say it's one of 17 known in the world. Oh, one of two. Well, we like to think that most, are, most of what we handle is pretty rare. Rarity only becomes a factor when there's desirability. It would be much harder to find a 10th edition of Huckleberry Finn than a 1st edition. That doesn't mean that the 10th edition is going to be more valuable. The art market at its core is a classic sort of supply and demand business. Jeff Koons, Alexander Calder, Andy Warhol, these are artists that were incredibly prolific. It just so happens that people seem to always want a work by Andy Warhol. Gerhard Richter, you can say there are 25 slash 26, depending on how you define it, paintings that he made in 1982, 1983 of candles, curtains and paintings. If you say that to an old master painter specialist, that doesn't sound particularly rare. In our fields, the relative quality and merits of every one of those works contributes to their rarity because they're not all the same by any means at all. When it comes to watches, we see them as being made in a series. Rolex Submariners, Haddock Calatravas, the Reference 96, these sort of staples which have changed over the years or have little, little differences, be it dial color, case size. If we know that this piece was made in 30 examples but there's only two with a black dial, that's a huge factor on the estimate. Rarity is hugely important for prints. Warhol, for example, he would make a formal edition of, say, 250. Before he printed the edition, he would print a couple of trial proofs to test what color he would choose for the edition. Because the impression is unique, it's very sought after. We've always sold blue diamonds on the fact that they are extremely rare. They are the most rare color. However, because of the strength of the market, they seem to be popping up everywhere. It doesn't really sound so sincere to say, oh my goodness, it's the most rare color. They are so rare. Good things are so scarce now. Nowadays, we will forgive the condition issues if it is rare. The chicken cup is such an iconic object. We did sell one in the 90s, which was not perfect. It was just so very, very rare. You cannot really place that value on the estimate, but you know the excitement is inherent in the piece. One of the fundamentals of auction dynamics is the idea that you would walk away. There's a point at which you say, you know what, I'll get the next one. Yeah, I've told people that on the phone before, where it's something is just outpacing the real market value of it. You can say to them with confidence, I'll find you another one. But if you're talking about a case age, there isn't another one. Kay Sage is one of my favorite artists, a female surrealist painter, and the wife of Yves Tanguy did just a few hundred works, period. The record for Kay Sage is around $3 million. No, $7 million, from an estimate of 70 to 90,000 pounds. You want what's called auction magic. Bidders from across the room, on the phones, vying for this spectacular, rare work of art. One of the fundamentals of rarity is that there's no more of this stuff being produced. Great examples end up in museum collections, they end up in private collections which will never be sold. So the pools diminish constantly. The older things are, the rarer they become. It becomes also rarer to get them in satisfactory condition. If we crack one bottle, there's one less bottle of that to go around for the rest of the world. And so when you're talking about only 100 bottles, 100 cases made, every year somebody's probably going to have one of those bottles, which makes it less and less likely that they're going to be those wines hanging around. The region of Burgundy only produces limited amounts of wine. When you think about South America is into wine, Asia is going crazy about wine, the market is so strong, there are some times that no estimate will hold how rare something actually is. Amrita Shergill is a national treasure in India, which means that her works are non-exportable. So when we were faced with having a work of hers that came from one of her relatives outside of India, we were faced with something of extreme rarity, and it ended up making a huge record price. 
What is rare today has been rare at least for a hundred years, in some cases for a thousand years. The Ruya washer that we saw, that's an object that was made in the late 11th, early 12th century. And already in 1192, which is barely a hundred years after it was made, you have a source saying Ruya is impossible to obtain today. By the time you come to the 21st century, there are probably only five, ten in the world for, for anyone to, to possess. That feeds the mythology of an object. When we are lucky enough to pull that sort of rabbit out of a hat, our collectors are really, their hearts are pumping.